This is the third video of uh, that I've been doing, going through all my linear algebra books, or at least most most of them, for a specific concept or a group of concepts. Uh, in this case, I'm curious about how the different books uh, talk about the various types of vector spaces. Now, uh, this goes back to what I was saying in the previous video of how all these authors decide to cut through all these different concepts and show them to you. Uh, in the case of Anton, being an introductory linear algebra book, and the same with Strang, uh, but especially with Anton, he really does a good job of laying out the various types of vector spaces so that you get a feel for how they all fit within each other, how, and how they're related to each other. But you'll see as I show the different books that different authors have made specific choices about how they want to go about this. In some cases, they'll list them all, uh, or I mean list all the major ones, and then add a few as they talk about basis, linear independence, uh, linear transformations, or linear maps, which is the same thing. Uh, but in the case of Anton specifically, I particularly like the way uh, he started just going through all the different vector spaces with examples, building them up, and then uh, at some point, and then subspaces, and then at some point he's got a diagram, which I'm going to zoom in, and hopefully I'll remember to uh, zoom out. I always put this book in the front because it's kind of like good for the uh, thumbnail. It's going to go in much later. Or later. Alright, so let me zoom in and see how I can do this. And of course, I've been trying to make these complex videos in one shot. Winds up that I always have to uh, screw it up and film it three or four times. But here we are. So, uh, this diagram is really useful in Anton because he lays out all a bunch of infinite vector spaces and then the uh, finite uh, vector space of the n-dimensional polynomials right in the center showing you how they're all nested and so all the functions then all the continuous functions all the continuous functions with a first continuous derivative then all the continuous functions with m continuous derivatives then infinitely differentiable continuous functions sine and cosine come to mind so um, let me see, and I've got a little script of which way I'm going to go in this tour, and I'm going to zoom out, finally, yes. I almost screwed it up, and I, because sometimes I, I'm looking at the book and not at the, at the visor of my camera. Sorry about that. So then, uh, in the case of Anton, the next, the next thing that I want to show is, again, how he continues to go through all the examples and flesh out all these different vector spaces within the context of, say, the ba a basis, okay? Um, yeah, and so then, uh, in example 6 of page 214, yeah, we're right here, of 216, yeah, we're right here, yeah, he'll, he'll show uh, r to the n, basis for r to the n, uh, basis for p, uh, the polynomials, and then the m by n matrices uh, and line them all up in examples. All right, I think we're done with Anton. Uh, then we can move on to, uh, to, uh, to Strang. And then, of course, in the case of Strang, and I really spend a long time looking through it, uh, he chooses to do it in his own unique way where the various types of vector spaces just come out slowly as the uh, the con other content is shown. So for example, in here, uh, all the way in page 97, fairly late in the book, he hasn't really run through a list of vector spaces, and he has not like picked three or four and done examples of each one. Uh, he's really just jumped in on the deep end of matrices, uh, which of course, it's fair and square for an engineering uh, linear algebra book, and then you really start uh, getting to see the various vector spaces in the problems. That's just how he shows, chooses to do it. So there really isn't a place in Strang where, uh, where they're all like, or many of them are listed as it was in the case of Anton. And so I call it like a diffused sort of way of showing all these types of vector spaces. Okay, so then now let's go to Halmus. So Halmus, of course, vector spaces is in the title. Uh, 
does a lot more than a simple book would do. Again, as I've mentioned before for this book, it's very cryptic uh, in some ways because of the old notation. But interestingly, very early in the book, Halmas does uh, use a set number of vector spaces as examples for linear combinations. And so he actually does do a bit of a listing uh, exercise. All right. Then now let's go to Axler. So then in the case of Axler, I really like Axler's treatment um, because it's really, uh, Axler really begins on page one. Uh, and this is something, that, of course, that I have read uh, a long time ago. Actually, the, the reason why I bought the, the Halmus book is because when I read some of Axler, of course, he's got a picture of our friend Halmus. May he rest in peace. And he mentions uh, that this book is actually sort of like a child of Halmus's book. Uh, so, of course, in the case of uh, Axler, he starts with the whole concept of the F field, and F being uh, a, super, uh, a field that includes all reals and all complex. So that lays it out, and he uses F throughout the book from day one, from the very beginning, and lays out uh, what vector spaces are all about very quickly. And so in the case of Axler, it's sort of native to the book to understand how all the different vector spaces, maybe except for matrices, uh, that, that, and how they're used and how they work. So in this case, it's not really a list, but the way uh, Axler starts with F uh, as, a, as a core concept uh, really allows him to, to list out some sample vector, some typical vector spaces very early on and just continually work through them. Yeah, concentrating on F. Yeah, so a lot of F treatment in, uh, in Axler. Then all the way to page 52, then of course, and I've mentioned this before in the previous video, the uh, vector space of linear transformations or linear maps, the, the Wiggly L, VW, is also gets a, a really heavy treatment in Axler. Okay, so then next, I'm going to go to Hoffman and Kuhn's. I'm going to continue saying it that way. In the case of Hoffman and Kuhn's, uh, he also does a, uh, a little bit of, of a Halmas treatment. Halman and Kuhn's have a lot in common. And so he does list some vector spaces, of course, uh, n by n matrices, uh, f to the n. Yeah, he does list a few and then uses that, uses it to, uses these vector spaces a little bit like Anton did as well, to show the properties of a vector space. That's the way Hoffman and Kuhn's do it. Um, and then, uh, let me see, if I go over to page 93 as an example, of course, then later on, all books do this, of course, because uh, effectively, vector spaces are almost like the palette of a painter, the colors. And so, wherever they, these authors go to a concept, uh, if it's a linear transformation, it's going to be from a vector space to another vector space or the same one. And so they have to pull from their palette and say, okay, I'm going to pick uh, the vector space of matrices. And now they're going to go to a vector space of polynomials and so on. Uh, so it, this is a, a good example here, this example 17 late in the book, where it's all about P3, polynomials all the way to uh, cube. Yeah. Okay, so then in the case of Lang, really like the way Lang starts his book uh, because in the case of Lang, he really explains the difference between the vector space and the field over which the vector space operates. So he's got a really nice uh, definition here that says, a vector space V over the field K is a set of objects which can be added and multiplied by elements of K. So the elements that you're multiplying and adding are all in that field. If they're reals, you're only doing real numbers. If they're complex, you're only doing complex numbers, and so on. Uh, in which a way that the sum of two elements of V is again an element of V, the product 
of an element of v by any element of k is an element of v, and the following properties are satisfied, vector space properties. So he really starts, I mean, very beginning of the book. Uh, another thing that I really like about uh, Lang, you see it's on page 4, it's right here in the very beginning, is how he lays out uh, how it's implicit that when you say uh, r square, it's over r most of the time. So really, thus, he says, c to the n is a vector space over c, q to the n is a vector space over q, and in the case of Lang, the f of Axler is the k of Lang. Okay, so then I think I'm going to go to my favorite, because I'm working through it, is... Uh, FIS. And in the case of FIS, um, also does the same thing that Lang did of mentioning the vector spaces right as he mentions, as they, because there's three of them, mention the uh, properties of a vector space. Yeah, very early on, many of the vector spaces are introduced with examples. Um, yeah, so that's. And then in the case of the applied books, very interesting. Uh, because Matrix is in the name, <laughs> right? So, these two books, Matrix is in the name. Sure enough, these books are all about the vector space of M by N matrices. And uh, the same can be said about uh, Agarwal. So, the applied books, that's really what they do.